Hi guys. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here with me. I am going to get myself a little bit organized here. <clears throat> so thank you for joining me for the Goal Setting for Business Success Masterclass. I'm so excited to go through this with you. I'm going to try to make this as concise as possible. Hopefully you have printed out the workbook that I created for you so that we can walk through it together. Um, if you haven't, it is editable in, um, on the computer, but I'm going to walk through this with you and feel free to take notes. Um, I am going to um, show you exactly how I roadmap, roadmap my own goals every six months in my business. And the reason that I do it every six months is because obviously goals change, your business evolves, um, you've gotten closer to some goals. So we need to re roadmap them and make them um, more digestible for the time that we are in that moment. So I'm going to go ahead and begin and take you through the entire process. I want you to make sure that you're, you're in a place that's quiet enough, that you're actually dedicating some time here to do this because I promise you that if you do this the right way, and what I mean by that is actually just like quieting out the noise around you and focusing on this, this is certainly business changing and quite frankly, life changing if you let it be. So let's go ahead and begin. We're going to start on what is labeled as page one in the notebook and it looks like this. All right, so the first thing, we are going to map out your entire week and what you can give to your business on a typical week. My dog is in here and she is snoring, so I'm so sorry. Um, okay, so as you can see, I, I built it out already and I broke it down into when I'm working with clients, when I'm not working with clients, when I'm working on podcasts, whatever your business looks like, I want you to break it out so that you can hold yourself accountable to those hours. So as you can see, I did non-client, uh, client, podcast. Okay, so you're gonna also, you're gonna total up all those hours and I want you to hold yourself accountable. And here's how. So you're going to, if you use any kind of appointment app, you can put these hours into the appointments. So those are the times that for me, um, I use Acuity to schedule uh, client appointments. So <clears throat> those are the times that clients can actually get into my calendar. So those are the times that I am not working out during that time. I am not working on my own business during that time. That is my client dedicated time. I also hold myself accountable with my podcast. So as you can see on Wednesdays, I do podcasts. I always put in my calendar that if someone's scheduling a podcast interview with me um, <clears throat> or a pre-interview, that happens on Wednesdays between nine and three. So that is how I hold myself accountable. If you don't have a scheduling app, which is totally fine, um, you can go into your calendar and actually write it down. And this way you can see it every single week and you don't have to kind of feel messy about it. Like I just kind of work on this whenever I can. No, no. You know that on Fridays between nine and two, that is when you are working on your own business. So that's when you're getting your marketing done. That's when you're getting everything done. So that's part one. Okay. So, and I'm totaling up my hours. My hours come up to 37 hours a week which is really important too, and you could take it one step further here and detail out <clears throat> the hours that you're gonna be working with clients during the week and not clients and podcasts so that you can actually physically see it and ultimately you're able to see basically how, many, how much money you're making per hour. <clears throat> Excuse me, my goodness. Hmm. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take it on past here. <clears throat> you can certainly go back to that if you need to. All right, so we are going to talk about why. Why are you doing this? Why are you showing up? Um, I know this is a part of our branding essentially, but there is a purpose to this, I promise you. I want you to think about 
your story. So this is my story. I'm using my story as an example. So um, ultimately, I wanted to write it out so that I could get down to my purpose in a way that really felt authentic to my story. So why am I really showing up here every single week, every single day, every single hour? I am here, my purpose, to guide the businesswoman that I was to be better and to live into her passion and actually make profits. And I'm also here to grow the woman that I am. So um, empowering other women is ultimately my purpose and, um, and also growing the person that I am. So the things that I do, every single thing that I do in my business, aligns with my purpose. And if it doesn't, that is the thing that I check in with. Does this align with why I am here? And yeah, it's important to be very clear about what drives you because if you are not um, aligned with whatever it is that presents themselves, you're not going to want to do it. You're going to procrastinate. Um, you know, so stay clear on that. And, um, and write this down for yourself. Take the time to actually tell your story to yourself. Okay, what are you the most grateful for in your life? Um, yeah, there is a point to this too. So I want you to write the top 10 things that come to mind. You can write 20, it feels good, but the 10 things that you're grateful for in your life. And here is why this is relevant to your goals. Because if you are not grateful for it, then you will not want more of it. I'm going to say that one more time. If you are not grateful for it, then you will not want more of it. Okay. So it might not feel completely uh, relevant all the time, but I have found that it really kind of is. Um, I'm going to walk through some of the stuff that comes up for me. So one of the things I'm most grateful for is my deep connection with other women who are truly good and accept me. I mean, this ties into my purpose so much. So if anything comes up in my business that allows me to deepen my connection with other women, my answer is yes. I always find a way to say yes. My desire deep down to learn and be better. That is something that I'm grateful for and it's only going to push me. So it's always going to be taking another course or, um, you know, learning from someone or, or having a really good coach. Okay. Um, I am grateful for the fact that we can afford a life of freedom, free from financial stressors that hold us back. Um, that's not, you know, that's something you build up to, of course, but it's something that um, drives me. So although the construct of money is not something that I think of on a daily basis, uh, financial stressors is something I think of all the time um, and being able to be free and do the things that we want. So having the ability, which is my next one, to, to experience things that bring me joy, ultimately that comes from the construct of money, right? We wouldn't be able to afford to go on trips and do things that bring me joy without money. So yes, money is a driver for me. So realizing as you write things, What's the underneath of it? What's at the crux of what you are grateful for? Okay, and now, um, where do you want to be at the end of the year? This feels very big. So um, I write it in a way of I want to, I want to be making $250,000 a year. I want to have a full time assistant and a CFO. I want to know, so this would be something um, in your business that was really big. So this could be, I want to know, <clears throat> um, I want to know Instagram inside and out, um, whatever that is for you. I want to grow my social media following on Clubhouse and Instagram. I want to work 20 hours a week. And here's where, um, you know, I had to think about this one because right now I'm working about 37 hours a week, as you saw in my schedule before but 20 hours a week feels like a really good number because I want to be able to hire a full-time assistant and a CFO. So I should be able to take things off of my plate. I currently have a amazing virtual assistant, but she's not full-time. 
and um, taking on someone who is full time, who's able to help me with certain things, just to completely take them off my plate, not even something I have to um, strategize further than just like talking to them about it. That would be a massive load off of me. Um, and a CFO obviously would, would change a lot of stuff for me as well, but I need to build to that place. So writing down, and, and I could keep going and going, but I want you to focus on what feels doable, what feels like you want it, and, um, and do, the, do the goals actually make sense together. Okay. Um, and what does your dream business look like in two years? Yes, this is important that we do this. Um, my dream business is not going to look like your dream business. My dream business is not having a physical location. I've been there. I've done that. But your business might want a physical location, and that's totally fine. I want to be able to, um, to work with one-on-one -on -one clients who I absolutely love, and I know that we will be powerhouses together. But I don't want to be working with um, as many one-on-one -on -one clients. I want to work about five. This isn't entirely true. I would want to work about seven hours per week with my one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, I would want to work about 10 hours per week within my own business. That can look a lot of different ways. Maybe that's um, um, putting together an event. Maybe that is... Um, strategizing what my my next course looks like whatever that is okay two years i have a full-time assistant to help me with xyz i have three courses so as you guys know i am dropping a course on january 26 that is called building a badass business it's my first course that i'm launching but i want to have two more courses by the end of two more years that are so super valuable and will help to scale my business and um, when I am ready to create those courses, it will allow me to work a little bit less, right? So again, building to that place, I am making $750,000 a year. Um, I'm writing a book. So that's my dream business in two years. I have not broken down each one of those goals, but off the top of my head without strategizing each goal, all of those th things feel not totally crazy. Um, you know, maybe some of them are stretch goals, but it's important to see it laid out on paper. Okay, or on a computer. Um, now to the super fun part. I love doing this and I want you to stay with me as I break this down. So when we set goals, what happens in our brains is if we're too abstract, then it just kind of gets lost and we nev never break down what actually is involved. So it stays far away. In order for this to feel realistic to you, to your brain, you have to break them down. So that is what road mapping is. So we're gonna go through, um, I wanna talk about the next 120 days in your business. I'm gonna use my business as an example, but I want you to do at the same time as me I want you to write down your goals for the next 120 days, which is five months. Because five months flies by, but if you are super hyper-focused every day on what your goals actually are and create an action plan to get towards them, you can hit them in five months. I promise you that. You can hit them in five months. Um, so my number one goal is I'm on national TV and in national media as an expert in marketing and business for creative women entrepreneurs. So that's my number one goal. Number two is I grow my social media following and position myself in an expert way. Um, that one's not too specific, but, but again, for me, it's really about being in that expert role. So I don't care as much what those numbers are. Um, if you are in a, in a, if you are in an industry or if your specific business needs those specific numbers, be as specific as possible. Number three, I'm making $20,000 per month. Okay. So again, this is over the next five months. So at the end of five months, you are there. So 
Um, all of those things are really pretty attainable. They might feel like stretches, but that's okay. We're going to break it down into um, goal road mapping right now. So we're going to start with what the goal is, and I'm going to use my first goal. You're going to do this with every single one of your goals, um, but this one, okay, in particular is I'm on national TV and in national media um, as an expert in marketing and business for creative female entrepreneurs. So now I'm going to take you through the steps to get there. Like what is my map to reach that goal? So when we do this, we're breaking it down in our brain in a way that we can actually digest it and we can actually take an action, right? We're, you're going to feel this too, as we do it, how much more doable it feels to you when it's not these big lofty random things in the sky. So step one for me, work on my social media kit. I'm sorry, not social media kit, work on my media kit. So in my media kit, I'm gonna be pulling anytime I've been on TV or anytime I've been um, speaking or in a role that you can see that I'm an expert. This is video, this is photography, this is anything that, that shows me in that role, okay? Um, and we're gonna break down even further what that looks like. Number two, step two, is hire a PR agency for national and local. So that might feel pretty straightforward, but it's not because there's lots of PR agencies and to your brain that might feel like, okay, how do I even do that, right? Other than just like a straight up Google search, how do you, what are the steps to actually get there? Um, and number three, work on my public speaking. Obviously, if you're going to be doing any kind of national media, you need to be able to show up in a way that they would want to have you on camera. So now the next part to our road mapping is who can help me with that? It is all about connection. I don't care if you have 500,000 followers on Instagram, you can reach out to one person. That's all you need is one person who can help you with each of these steps. So the person who has 500,000 followers or whatever your metric is, um, but they don't have strong connections, it doesn't ultimately matter. Um, so step one, work on my social media kit. Who can help me with this? That's the question that I ask myself. So my virtual assistant, who's very savvy with those things. Um, my photographer, who is, um, she's a brand photographer <clears throat> and I can pull her in for this and a videographer. So those are the three people that I can turn to that can help me to guide me on create or guide a create. Oh my gosh, guide me on creating a media kit. Um, I'm also going to find any videos that I already have and find any photos that I already have. Step two, hire that PR agency. So who can help me with that? Well, I first want to know who has incredible PR that I can emulate. I have two people that come to mind. One of them I follow on social media. One of them is actually a friend of mine. So those are two people now that I have in my brain that I can um, reach out to. And the last step is work on my social or work on my public speaking. <clears throat> so who can help me with that? The three people that come to mind, Julie, Melissa, and Allie, um, those are the three people that um, I know Julie is actually an actress and she would be able to definitely help me on my speaking. And Melissa and Allie are um, friends of friends. I also follow on different social media platforms so I can reach out to them. And now here's my goal, of course. <clears throat> All right, so now, you're gonna take those roadmaps, you're gonna take the people that you listed, and you are going to empower the law of reciprocity. Um, basically what that means is you're gonna do something nice and valuable for anybody who you're asking a favor of, so that they will feel compelled to help you, right? This is easy peasy. Like there's so many different things that come to mind when I think of each person, what's something valuable that I can do for them? And then I don't want you to ask anything of them. I want you to allow, allow the law of reciprocity to work. So 
this doesn't necessarily pertain to anyone that you would be hiring. For the sake of this example, we're gonna pretend that I'm gonna ask the photographer and videographer for a favor. Of course, I can pay them and that would be an easier route, but maybe you don't have um, the cash flow to pay them or uh, maybe they are friends of yours or maybe they do things for you often for free. So we're gonna just pretend that these are favors or you're gonna be asking something of them. So the photographer, one thing that you could do is connect her with two potential clients that have been reaching out. Um, videographer, um, I actually have an event that's coming up. So one thing I could do is invite her to the event, to attend the event and, um, and let her know, hey, there's gonna be people there that you could perhaps uh, work with and network with. And then the last person is Lisa. I had a bunch on there, but for the example, um, so what I'm gonna do with Lisa is I'm going to take some things that she shares in her social media that's relevant this week, and I'm gonna share it on my social media and make sure that I pay attention to what she's posting <clears throat> so that she feels extra love for me this week. And then once you have done those things for them, let it sit, let it live, give it a couple of days and space, and then you can reach out to them. You can reach out to Lisa and say, hey, Lisa, just wanted to touch base. I, your PR is amazing. Would you mind sharing the name of your PR agent? I'd love to reach out to her. Now, you're not just asking for something out of the blue, right, which just feels wrong. You are actually doing something nice for her so that she feels compelled to answer your DM, to give you that name. And um, yeah, just feels way more authentic. And it's powerful when you do something kind for somebody else. And then last, but certainly not least, what are the three action items that you can take today to move your goals forward? I want you to pick three things that you're gonna do today, not tomorrow, not next week, today. It could be those things that we listed in the law of reciprocity. Um, it could be three totally different things, but I want you to choose to do three things today because when we set all of these goals and then we just leave that paper on the table and we do nothing it doesn't matter but a mind in motion stays in motion so if you're in this flow of you're working towards your goals you're going to stay on that track if you fall off it's okay but if you just put this paper down and you feel like okay i went to this master class i'm i'm okay until tomorrow you're already kind of putting it off so you're going to have to re-jumpstart yourself tomorrow. Start today. Um, and then the last question is, what are the three things you can do consistently over the next 60 days to move towards your goals? That's going to be something that feels authentic to you. So what we just did is roadmapped your actual goals. And if you take this um, template and uh, create your roadmap every six months, you can obviously write it on a, on a, in a notepad. I like to have something pretty like this to make myself, I'm, I'm just so visual, make myself actually follow a map. Um, so I am so thrilled that you are here. I'm so glad I got to share with you the way that I goal roadmap. Congratulations, you are one step, actually 10 steps closer to building out your business in the way that you want to and focusing on the things that are actually going to make you happy, which is only going to make you more addicted to your success. Um, as you probably know, and if you don't, then I'm telling you first here, my first course is coming out on January 26th. It is called Building a Badass Business. This course starts with goal setting and then we walk you through every step that you can take in your business to create a foundation in your business that will set you up for success. This is all of the stuff that I wish that I knew when I started my first and second business. And I basically built this template, this course, for the person that I was those years ago. And I learned all those things the hard way. So if nothing else, get on the wait list. Um, there's gonna be a discount code that gets sent only to the waitlist. This link on here is directly to that waitlist. Tells you all about the course, all the details that you wanna know. 
there's anything else you want to know, go ahead and shoot me an email. Um, I'm also going to drop the link in this video so you can you can go ahead and click it right there. But I'm so glad that you were here. I hope you take away so much from this. Do me a favor. If you enjoyed this, if you did some work here, take a picture of something, post it in your stories, tag me. I want to be able to reshare it. I so appreciate you. And I will see you, I hope, in building a badass business. But if not, I will see you somewhere I know that I will. Have a good one.